Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to present the ups and downs of zero gravity, also known as weightlessness, and how NASA pulls off this illusion. First of all, let me introduce you to the Zero Gravity Corporation. If you've ever dreamed of flying, you can. It's surprisingly simple, but no less profound. Feel the unbelievable freedom of weightlessness and discover your own potential. For one amazing moment in time and space, you're unlike anyone else on this plane. This is not a simulation, it's real. You are actually weightless. What you'll feel is like nothing else on earth. So what they do is simulate weightlessness on an airplane through a parabolic maneuver. Or if you like a simpler way of putting it, the plane goes up and the plane goes down. And the people go floating on the way down. But they use harnesses on the fake space station so they don't go face first smack into the camera. But of course, there's more to it. In the early days of space exploration, NASA developed a technique to recreate zero gravity, the notorious Vomit Comet. Because the weightless effect of microgravity is nothing more than a continuous freefall, it's possible to simulate it by flying an aircraft in a huge arc or parabola, which, for short periods of time, allow those on board to float as though in space. But the stomach-churning ride could spell trouble for some people. So it's pretty obvious that this is how they fake zero gravity, but they can't do it for a very long time. They float, they go crashing about, and eventually they hit the floor. The wire harness prevents the astronauts from crashing on the way back up, and there's a reason the climb back up is never that obvious, because their arms and clothes should shift downward during the climb the director of this hoax solved the problem by filming the astrotards upside down. So when the plane climbs up, the astrotards seem to be floating up and when it dives, they settle back down to the middle. As such is the effect of this maneuver. And they still have the harness for insurance. they scare me but I, I'll tell you that I take them uh, very very uh, um, seriously in that we exercise um, you know about almost two so hours the reason it is filmed upside down is mainly for the upswing what is most puzzling though is the time or length of the ISS interviews is it possible to maintain zero G for so long but first let's check how easily the interior is faked the fake station is a cylindrical structure or simply put a tube, just as a plane is a tube. So now they fit this plane with props and or green screen to make it look like the ISS. But can a pilot maintain the right angle of descent for the length of an entire interview? Let's go over how the maneuver works in simple terms. The plane climbs up, which builds momentum. The bodies of the passengers now have that momentum. The moment the plane starts to dive back down, that momentum or inertia is still present. So naturally, with the body still traveling upward and the plane now going down, the plane is going down faster and ahead of the passengers. This produces the illusion of floating. But let's forget all the talking and have a real good look on how this actually works. What you are about to see is real. It was shot in zero gravity in an actual plane in the sky. There are no wires or green screen.
So yes, they can maintain the maneuver for a long time. What you just watched had no cuts in there at all. Now let's talk a bit about the floating props. The prop is always there to close the deal, to really give the illusion an air of reality. It's a pretty perfect deception, except for the ridiculous hair. And her face, which looks like it's going to pop any second. But the dead giveaway is the dangly jewelry. Even commercial airlines have strict guidelines because of safety precautions for their cabin crews concerning accessories. This fraudulent bitch is supposed to be in space, in a space station that is allegedly traveling at no less than 17,500 miles per hour. The necklaces and dangly jewelry are there for a purpose. If this were real, however, they would not be allowed to wear them because such item could become lodged in a door or a port or some piece of sensitive electronic equipment. Now take a good look and you can actually see the pressure building up in her beet red face. These clowns are upside down and nowhere near in space. This deception is downright obvious but still countless space tards who have been brainwashed since childhood fall for this deception on a daily basis.